Hi, welcome back for another episode of APA's EdTech Bytes. So today we are going to talk about interactive video activities inside of Google Classroom. They are a type of activity that you can make and share with your students just like any other assignment inside of Google Classroom. So inside of a Google Classroom, you have your three lines up here in the top left, and that's going to open up your kind of toolbar menu. Um, in this toolbar menu, you do see that you have a resources tab. You click on that. This is where practice sets and interactive video activities live. Um, you can start a new practice set or a new video activity. For today, we're just gonna focus on the video activities. So we're going to start one by clicking the plus here for new video activity. And then what you're able to do is search uh, any YouTube video that you want. It could be one that somebody else has already posted, or it can be one that um, you upload to your own YouTube channel. And as long as you have a YouTube URL, you'll be able to search for it here and find it. So here's an example of an assignment I've already created. So I just found this um, Nat Geo Kids video on uh, what is Earth and the layers of the atmosphere. And um, what I you're able to do in an interactive video activity is actually add questions that will pause the video when they get to that question. So the students will answer the question before they move on to watch the rest. So it makes watching a YouTube video a little bit more interactive, a little more engaging, and you're able to assess the understanding of what's actually happening in the video. Um, you have the opportunity to add three types of questions. You can add a multiple choice question, a checkbox where they can select multiple responses, or an open-ended question where they will actually type their response. Um, the multiple choice and checkbox options do allow you to auto grade. So you can you know, tell it what the correct answers are and it will actually let the kids know when they get the question wrong so they can keep trying. And in your data in Google Classroom, you'll be able to see how many attempts it took the students to get to the correct answer. For open-ended responses, those do require review. Uh, so those will not be auto-graded. You can go in and, and assign the grades for those. The beautiful thing about interactive video activities is that Google Classroom does allow you to try this as a student. So up here, you have a Try as Student button. It gives you kind of the experience of what students will see when they see this in an assignment. You can preview the video by clicking play. And then as the video plays, every time it gets to a question, it will pause and then it will draw their attention to what the question is that you're asking. So as an example of what a short answer or open-ended question looks like. Here's an example of a multiple choice. And here's what a checkbox answer looks like. Um, for true false questions, sometimes I uh, trick the kids and use the check boxes just to see if they try and check both. But the beauty is if they check both and click submit, it will tell them that they're wrong. <laughs> and that's what it looks like when the, um, the video activity will actually prompt them to try again. Um, and then if they change their answer, click try again, they'll be able to get the correct answer. They do have the opportunity to skip questions. You will get data on that in your Google Classroom gradebook. Um, so if a student skips all of the questions, you will know that and can uh, intervene appropriately. It, once it gets to a uh, question, they also have the opportunity to click this rewatch button and it's gonna replay the section right before the question. So if they missed something and they're not quite sure, they can click rewatch and it will actually rewind the video for them uh, to help support their understanding. If you don't like how it's turning out, you can click the edit button, go back in, you can add more questions if you want to. You can edit where the question appears here in the question time box. So if you're not quite sure when you want the video or the question to occur, you can kind of drag your cursor along and notice the thumbnail timing down here. If you click here and then click add, it will automatically put that question wherever you clicked. So that is helpful, or you can just type in the, the time here, whatever the timestamp might be. You can remove questions this way as well. Like this one, it's gonna tell me I have an error. It's gonna be mad at me until I fix it. Um, I can just click the trash can and throw that one away. But as I'm editing these, I can go back in and change it. And then I just press save and continue. 
and then the video will continue playing and I can um, add questions as I need to. Whenever I like the way it is, I can click done. And now it brings me back to my resource menu inside of Google Classroom. From here, I can click on the three dots and actually share a link to this assignment. So maybe me and my partner teacher are both going to do the same assignment. I can share this video activity with them. Uh, maybe you take turns creating video activities and you share them with each other. It's a really great way to uh, kind of lessen the load of lesson planning. You can also make a copy of it if you want to have differentiated options. Maybe you have um, one that has all open-ended questions and one that has more check boxes and multiple choice, and you can differentiate your, which activity your students get inside of Google Classroom. You can also, of course, throw video activities away by moving them to the trash. So once you have something that you really love, you go into one of your uh, Google Classrooms and you start an assignment just like anything else. You click Create Assignment, and then down here in the Attach menu, you're going to select YouTube. And then instead of searching for a video, you'll simply click My Video Activities. And this is where all of your video activities that you've made from uh, inside your resource tab live. You can select the one you want to assign. It'll let you preview it. It'll let you try it as a student, all that good stuff. If you're ready to make the assignment. You click Attach. And now it's here for the kids. Something new inside of Google Classroom is that you can tag skills to your assignments. You could search for um, whatever skill you need, um, and then you can tag it there. And then in your gradebook, it'll actually uh, categorize the grades by those skills. Edit the title, enter some instructions, assign it to all of your students or maybe groups of students here. That's a way to differentiate. Give it a due date, topic, set your grading uh, periods and um, categories if that's what you use. And then you would click assign or you can schedule it for later. As a student, they're gonna come and see this just like any other assignment. Okay. In your grade book, when a student has completed a, a video activity, um, you will be able to get some really cool insights. So first of all, you can see class insights where you can see the performance of every student in your class on that assignment. And here I can see that they got two out of three correct, and that this indicates it was ungraded because it was an open-ended question. I need to go in and grade it. This is dark green, which means it was correct on the first attempt. This one is light green, which means they took two or more times for that student to get the correct answer. And if I had more students that took this assignment, I would see that data for each of them. I wanted to look at it question by question. I could click on the question, type, and then see what each student responded and quickly grade all of those questions at the same time. Unfortunately, this student was incorrect, so I mark it incorrect, and now it changes to a red X here to show that they did not answer that correctly. I could search by just each individual student by clicking on the student's name. I can review their answers to each question from the activity. I already graded this one. If I go in and see their problem number two, they got it correct on the first try. If I needed to, I could always go in and change it to incorrect, but I don't need to. I can see their attempts here. So the first time they attempted it, they selected both checkboxes. Their second attempt was the correct answer. So I can see, even if they were just guessing, I can see that. <laughs> and I can make some uh, professional judgments based on that. So after I have graded the individual questions, I can give them an overall grade um, based on their responses. So maybe this is a 70% because they got one out of three incorrect. And then I can return that grade to them just like anything else inside of Google Classroom. The beauty of using interactive video activities is that it's allowing you to use YouTube as an instructional tool without the students being able to access the rest of YouTube. Right, if you just send the kids a link, then they're able to browse YouTube. Uh, but within Google Classroom, it keeps them locked into this assignment and they can't get anywhere else. So it's very helpful in that way. In the slide deck that I am providing along with this video recording and session um, are the steps on how to do all of the things that I just walked you through. 
Um, so please review that if you uh, need any extra support. But um, I hope that helped you learn a little bit more about how to use interactive video activities inside of Google Classroom. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments below or reach out to us at edtech at APS.edu. We look forward to seeing you in the next EdTech Bytes.